Hey guys, welcome to episode 10 of Pineapple Knits. I'm Marina, and you can visit me on Instagram and Ravelry at Pineapple Yarn, and you can visit my hand-dyed yarn company at pineappleyarn.com. So I hope you guys are having a great week. It is two weeks, it's been two weeks since my last podcast, and I'm so happy to be here. If this is the first time that you have joined me for this podcast, thank you so much for checking me out. And for those of you who have viewed my podcast before, thanks so much for coming back. Uh, normally this is a, kn a knitting podcast, sometimes sewing, sometimes life things, <laughs> mostly knitting though. And I'm coming to you from central Indiana where I live with my husband and a house full of little kids. <laughs> so this is my outlet and I just really enjoy spending this time with you. Um, normally I try to uh, film a podcast about once a week. Last week didn't happen. Um, like I said, I have little kids. I have not slept for quite a while, and it's not not the figurative like, oh, you don't sleep when you have little kids. It's the, I wasn't able to catch any sleep until 6 a.m. when my husband woke up and took over, kind of not sleeping. So uh, that's, you know, I guess it makes you thankful for the time that you actually do get to sleep. And um yeah, my two-year-old has also decided that she would like to be potty trained, which is great, normally. Um, it is great. It's it's great, right? Um, you guys, I hate potty training. I really hate it. Um, I hate cleaning up accidents. I hate changing diapers. I really hate cleaning up accidents, which has been happening every single day. So we're just going to leave it at that. <laughs> Mama's tired here, but good thing I'm knitting to get me going, and um, I'm also relying on a little iced coffee today. So let's get started with knitting. I have a finished object to show you guys this week. This is actually something I finished um, maybe two months ago, I want to say. It's been two months already. This was a test knit I did for Tin Can Knits, and it is a pattern called Boardwalk. It is a bottom, I guess a bottom up um, cardigan, and it is made, or it is, uh, it uses DK weight yarn. So I don't know if you can see, the bottom is a rib, it's a really neat um, separa separated uh, hem, I guess. Bear with me today, guys. I'm probably not going to be using the right words for things. <laughs> but it's just a, a simple rib. Um, knit up, and then you knit up the sleeves, join them, and you continue with the yoke. The really unique thing about this pattern, and um, I have not seen a pattern like this anywhere. I've never seen one like it, is that it is written so you can knit it either buttoning in the front or buttoning in the back. So it's, um, I think it's so cute. Some of these, I, I opted to do it in the front because it is a larger size. This is actually for my eldest daughter and um, she told me she didn't want it buttoning in the back. <laughs> so I knit it this way. But there were some cute, cute, um, testers who did their test knits and they knit cute um, child size sweaters or baby sweaters with the buttons down the back. They're so cute. And um, and there were some adult sizes too, but this was such a great pattern to test knit. I was um, very excited to be able to do this test for Tin Can Knits. And it's such a well-written pattern. If you guys have, I'm sure some of you, or most of you, if not all of you, have um, knit with Tin Can Knits patterns. They are so well-written and they are great for beginners. They're great, um, they do have more complicated patterns, but I kind of feel like they're really classic patterns. Um, something like this that is a pretty standard cardigan um, and of course you know the novelty with this is that it can be buttoned in the back 
but um, their patterns really are quite classic. They're really well written. They fit well. And so I was really happy to make this. This uh, is knit up with my yarn, pineapple yarn, in the Heritage colorway, which is so pretty. It is um, kind of a multicolor, almost rainbow. I know I put a swatch of this quite a while ago on Instagram, and um, some of you remarked it looked like stained glass windows, um, and it does. It's, it's a really pretty. I'm going to see if I can really wouldn't want to take it off this, but I'm going to see if I can get the colorway to show up a little better. Let's see here. So yeah, it's just a really, really pretty bright colorway, very variegated. I did knit this um, alternating skeins, that's what I'm trying to say. So I didn't have any pooling, and uh, yeah, I just think it turned out so well. I'm really happy with it, and I'm excited that I can finally show you this. So I am working on several other test knits right now. I'm actually working on three other test knits right now, and they're secret test knits. I can't show you them, which is really too bad because that is all I've been working on lately, or mostly. I actually do have one work in progress I've been, I have been working on, and that is my beekeeper cardigan. This is a pattern by Marie of All of Knits, and um, I've talked about this for weeks, and you know, the big draw with this is that it was a four day knit along. You could knit a sweater in four days. You could. <laughs> Some people did, not me. <laughs> but what I did, I'll show you where I am up to, actually. I have done the entire body, and you can tell these stitches are on hold here. This is a sleeve that is in the progress. Um, yeah, so what I did, I, you know, I if I had hours every day, hours plural, to knit, I probably could have done this. Um, it's with a DK weight yarn. It's a really great weight. The pattern, it's just so fun, the stitch pattern. I love this. Marie refers to them as little bees in her, um, in her pattern, which I think is really cute. But um, if I could have knit this for hours, for four days, I probably could do it, um, but I don't. And really, I one person, I can't remember her Instagram name, but she actually recorded or, or kept track of the number of hours she spent on her cardigan. And she was able to finish her cardigan, and I wanna say 70 hours. I think she's trying to get it under 72 hours, which I thought was a really good idea because um, not all of us have large chunks of time. A lot of us have smaller chunks of time to knit, and um, that's really what I should have done is just kept track of how many hours it was taking me. But I'm excited about this. Got the body done. Um, the next step, I'm just going to do the sleeves and then pick up around the you know, I need to do a, a band around the neck up here and then also down. And um, I think what I'm also, what I'm going to do is now that I've, I've actually had the luxury of spending more time on it when I knew I wasn't going to finish it in four days, um, I think what I'm going to do is do a full length sleeves, so not the three-quarter sleeves. I am going to do full-length sleeves. And then another thing I'm going to do is I am going to add buttons. So the sweater itself does not call, the pattern does not call for buttons, but I actually popped into um, Hobby Lobby today, and this is one of the things I got. I don't know if these are going to match. This is the first time I've actually looked at them together, but I picked up these buttons, and I think that they... Are going to work out. I think they look good. Um, these are 
Yeah, these are just under an inch. These are seven eighths of an inch. So I didn't want buttons that are too small just because the um, cardigan itself is really textured and I kind of wanted a larger button to balance that out. Not really a larger button, but I wanted a, a fair size button to, to balance that out. But I think that's gonna work out really well. So I got a number of those. And um, yeah, so the total amount of time I've spent on this cardigan so far is I spent, I worked on it exclusively last weekend, Saturday and Sunday. And then I also worked on it exclusively this past Saturday and Sunday. So technically I've spent four days on it. And I think that's what this is going to turn into is kind of my weekend cardigan. <laughs> I think that's probably what I'll call it, my weekend cardigan. But um, yeah, I think it's super pretty, love the color. I'm so excited to have a sweater once it turns cooler and um, yeah, something just for me so I don't have to scramble to make something once it gets colder and so I'm I am happy with that I'm happy with the the uh, color oh I should say that's also knit out of my hand dyed yarn pineapple yarn in the colorway honeycomb so that is really all that I can show you for knitting today um, I'm also wearing my building blocks shawl by that's a pattern by Stephen West it was a uh, mystery knit along I think I want to think the end of the summer in maybe 2016 say it was about two years ago was that 20 it might have been 2015 I can't remember but this is such a fun this is a really fun mystery knit along because it started down here with this you have four colors colors A through D you didn't know how they were gonna go so you kind of just kind of hope for the best but the neat thing was is that he he's such a master of color and texture and it was really fun putting all of these different colors together and the different colors they turn into in this shawl so I'm gonna pull this up and you guys can see what this looks like the full length of it it is so neat so with all of these colors mixed together there was um, some brioche there's some different ways to, to do striping in the rows um, I think this is an i-cord bind off but it is a really massive shawl like I can't I can't even show you like the ends are so long on this and the shape is really interesting it's very angular it has these really cool points and um, blocking this was very interesting because I didn't have um, this was when we lived in Hawaii and so we just um, if you guys are familiar with the housing there house houses apartments there's just not a lot of room it's very it's an island it's very small um, you don't have massive houses like you do here on the mainland um, I didn't have a room large enough to block this and the the place where I blocked it was our largest room and it I think it barely fit or I had to do something kind of funky it was just it was really funny but um, yeah so I was happy about this and I decided to wear it today because it is a or it was the last time I checked this morning it was a cool 65 degrees and I'm sure some people look forward to that I personally get worried I get a little nervous when the temperature dips down like that because I know that winter's coming and I I mean it's July it's ridiculous to be saying that right now but I'm not a winter person so <laughs> anyway moving on I do want to show you guys a couple of things that I um, have picked up the past couple of weeks so um, yeah I don't usually I guess I haven't really shown any kind of like stash acquisitions or um, things I've picked up but these are just a couple 
of things. They're not yarn, but just a couple of things that I thought may, have, may be of interest to you. So the first thing I actually picked up at Hobby Lobby when I was um, picking up those buttons, these are by Clover and they're called Wonder Clips. Um, I think they've been out for quite a while, but um, you use them in the, um, oh my gosh, I'm thinking words, as a substitute for pins in sewing. And um, I'm gonna show you something. I didn't know this, and I thought this was really neat. So they are just these little clips, but on the back, um, I don't know if you guys can see the lines. Those are actually seam allowance measurements. And so when you pop it on your seam allowance, you can actually measure out and, I don't know, in case you want to measure it, that was kind of neat, but um, these were $6.99 regular price. Um, you get 10 of them. I'm really excited to be to use these with my project bags, with um, sewing my project bags. I actually don't ever use pins, <laughs> probably should more often, but I've made so many project bags at this point, I don't really need pins. But I do think these will be really handy for heavier weight fabrics um, at the point where I put my zipper in. I think it'll be pretty handy. So um, yeah, pretty excited to pick these up, try them out. And then the other two things that I have are books. And um, I have been really really into spinning lately. Um, the idea of spinning. <laughs> um, I've wanted a spinning wheel for years and I've talked about this on another podcast, but I figured until I just, um, I feel like it's such a big, uh, price commitment. It's, it's a pricey piece of equipment to just jump into, which is how I normally do things is just jump into them. So I want to educate myself a little more and um, just learn a little more about the spinning wheels themselves. So I know kind of what I'm looking for. Um, I don't really know of anyone around here who sell spinning wheels, like a dealer where I could go try them out, at least locally. Um, and I've also talked about that just with taking care of my kids, with all of my, with all of my kids. I can't just pop into shops a lot. Um, it has to be well orchestrated. But the first uh, book I purchased that I thought would maybe help me out in choosing is this book, How to Spin from choosing a spinning wheel to making yarn. And um, I purchased this on Amazon. It was definitely under $10. I, I wanna say maybe around $7 brand new. So it was uh, an inexpensive book. And it really is from start to finish a beginner's book on spinning. Um, I have had a really great time looking through this it is, I'm just gonna show you a couple of pictures that I thought were interesting that are very, very basic. Like, hmm, tying on a leader. I probably would have just tied a knot and got going, you know what I mean? Um, I know there's another one, like how to oil your, your wheel, um, different ways to actually prepare the, the wool, so. I'm excited to get through this and um, just learn a little more about what I'm looking for. So pick this up and surprise, surprise, the next book is also about spinning. The Spinner's Book of Yarn Designs. I have no idea if these are actually um, popular books or well-known. They probably are. I also picked this up on Amazon. It's a really beautiful book too. Really beautiful book. It is basically the techniques for 
um, all different kinds of yarn. And the neat thing is, I won't get too much into it, but the cool thing is um, there are actually in the back of this book, there are reference cards and I'm assuming that if you want to carry them around instead of a big hardcover book, that's what they're for. So this is what uh, one of them looks like. I haven't, I haven't, uh, these are perforated so you can take them apart, but it's basically just reference cards and um, this is what the other side looks like. I think this is kind of neat. The um, angles, you can see, um, I guess, calculate your twist, which is kind of neat. Different, um, I guess, different styles of plying. I don't know. I haven't got through this book yet. So I am very much a beginner. And I actually forgot two weekends ago, and I think I may have mentioned this on an older podcast as well, I, I do have a drop spindle. Some of you had said, you know, you should take up drop spindling if you want to learn how to spin. I do have a drop spindle, and I have had it for a number of years. Every once in a while I pull it out. It's just not as fast as a spinning wheel, for me anyway. Um, and I really want to spin yarn that I can use. And I've never been able to do that with a drop spindle just because of the time involved in it. But I was really wanting to spin. So I had forgot, I actually have a rainbow roll from Nori, um, it's of pencil roving, and I started spinning that. I'll go get it and show you. It's it's not great. Um, I have a long ways to go, but let me show you really quick. Okay, I went and got my spinning and realized I had some other things to show you guys. You can tell that I don't have notes for this podcast. I do. I do write show notes afterward, but it's kind of a stream of consciousness, which... I don't know, might be a bad thing. But anyway, so here is um, what's left of my rainbow roll. It is um, split into pencil roving. It's a huge roll and I pulled from the center, but this is what it looks like. It's just roving split up. As you can tell, there are a lot of knaps, like little felted pieces, which wasn't uh, wasn't great for my yarn, and I think maybe people pick those out when they spin. I don't know. That's what it looks like. And so that's a hundred grams, quite a big roll. But this is how much I spun of it. My entire <laughs> spindle is full, and I don't really. I'm not really sure where to go at this point. Um, I knew I probably should have got a some kind of book about how to spin because I really wanted to ply this and like, I really didn't want it to be a single but I don't know when you are spinning a yarn if you're going to ply it do you want it to be over twisted? I know when you spin when you have a single, you don't want it to be over twisted. But like this, so this is spun, it is not over twisted. But I'm sure there are pieces of this. <laughs> I'm kind of I'm kind of the person who goes along spinning and I'm and I'm thinking, yeah, I definitely want to over twist because I want to apply it. And that, you know, I want it to be to kind of kink up on itself because it needs to have twist and then and then I keep thinking, no, I don't want it to be like that. So this is going to be so uneven and, you know, we're just, I'm just going to go with it and I will make something with this and it will be like a little kid's drawing to their parents and it'll be 
just kind of a labor of love because this is my first. So um, I still have quite a bit of this and I have not weighed this is what I should do. I should weigh it. I didn't weigh it to begin with. So it's around 100 grams. Who knows how um, exactly how much it is. I don't know what to do with it at this point with the spindle because this is definitely full and I'm thinking that I will take my ball winder and wind it into a cake and then spin the rest of this. So that's kind of my my idea about this. Um, I loved this. I love the color changes in this and the fact that I don't have to think about drafting or preparing the wool or anything. Um, the things I don't like about this obviously are there, the little felted bits. Um, there is some vegetable matter in here just like with Nori yarn. It just kind of comes with the territory. So yeah, that's my spinning project for this week. And then I also forgot that I bought two um, I made two purchases having to do with spinning and uh, when I actually got my drop spindle out, I used to have some kind of fiber, loose fiber. I, I really don't remember what it even was. I don't, re I don't remember anything about it. That was years ago, four or five years ago. Um, no, more than that. It was probably six years ago when I bought it. I have no idea what happened to it. It was hot pink. <laughs> I have no idea what happened to it. Um, and all I had was the rainbow roll. So I decided because I need to beef up my stash because when I get a spinning wheel, I need fiber to spin, right? Right? So I made two purchases. The first purchase I made was from um, Jinx Yarns. And it is a braid. I guess you say a braid. I know they're not technically braids, but a uh, braid. <laughs> of um, This is Superwash Merino. And I think this is so pretty. I love these colors. This is called Land of Glaze. And there are pinks, purples, oranges, reds. It is really stunning. Um, I do know, even though I'm really, really such a newbie, I do know that Merino has a short staple length. Pretty sure. And it probably is not the best fiber to begin spinning, but um, I saw this. I, I just think this is so, so beautiful. And, you know, one of the reasons that I purchased that these books is because I don't know where to go with this. Like, I don't know how to turn this into yarn. I mean, I thought, maybe naively, that you just started drafting and spinning, which I'm sure you can do. Um, through my research, I have realized that there's a lot more that goes into taking this to yarn and it mostly depends if you are going to spin it woolen, worsted, um, the thickness of your yarn. Um, so anyway, this one's pretty. <laughs> Maybe I'll just keep it like this. It's so pretty. At least I will for a while, I think. I was very excited to get this. So this is one of the acquisitions. And then I also purchased something from Naturally Knitty. These are called Puni Style Rollads. I've never had these before, but I thought these were so pretty. This was from um, her shop on Etsy. And I will just get one out so you can see it. This actually, she also sent me a sample, which I'll show you. I'm a little more familiar with how to do these because it's kind of self-explanatory, I think. I think. <laughs> I don't really know. But 
I think these are so, so pretty. They're um, yellow, blue, pink, back to blue. The blue is just this really pretty, it's almost like a bright cobalt. I love that blue color. And um, let's see, I believe this is two ounces. She calls them, this is her Northern Lights colorway. And it has a ton of different fibers in it. I'm just gonna show you her card that explains all the different things in it or fibers in it. I can definitely see the Fire Star, which I was kind of excited about because I do know, I do know the Fiber Star or Fire Star is kind of a sparkle. But um, this seems I did pull a little bit of this out, and this seems spinnable. I could spin this. <laughs> so I thought this was really fun. And then she also sent me a sample. I don't know what fiber it, this is made of. It is so soft though. And I've already pulled some out. I mean, it is incredibly soft. I should message her and see what this is made from. But um, it is incredibly soft. But I thought that was sweet that she sent a little sample um, with those. So yeah, those were my fiber acquisitions. I really don't know when I'm going to use them, but when I do, I will show you. <laughs> so this week I have had no yarn dyeing. I have not dyed any yarn. I know a couple of you have requested certain colorways that you would like to see in the shop. I am not going to be having those uh, for this week's or this bi-weekly, bi-monthly uh, shop update. So I'm sorry for that. I'm sorry if you're expecting that. Um, but I will have a lot of project bags. I was looking in my shop, I was browsing my shop, and noticed that there are not a lot um, of project bags right now. I need to replenish the stock. So that's what I've been working on this week. And I'm just gonna show you a couple. I have a lot of project bags, so I'm not going to show you all of them. I'm just gonna show you a few. I want to start off first with some, a new um, design I came up with. This is actually um, mostly using a purchase pattern um, and I'll put the maker down below. And these are what I'm going to call my sock wristlets. Now I have show, I showed you these probably on one of my first podcasts. I use a prototype of these and I love it. I absolutely love it. It is lightweight. And let me just show you how to use these. This is inserted into the smaller handle and fastens like this into a Japanese knot. And then you can just wear it on your wrist. This is a wonderful design for sock knitting. I put a, a cake of yarn in here. I can wear it on my wrist. It's not heavy or cumbersome on the wrist. Um, there's actually a lot of room here, so it would fit any uh, sized wrist. And then you can just knit while holding your bag. And this is great for me because I can do it while my kids are at the playground, outside playing, you know, if I am um, helping them color, <laughs> you know, when I'm sitting there helping them with homework, whatever. Um, there's so many different um, times that I have used this and I found it so helpful. I've actually stood in line at the post office uh, using these. So I finally made a few and I'll be putting these in my shop. I will have uh, these mermaids. I will have um, some fabric, 
um, from my Hawaiian st fabric stash, which is, uh, sadly, it's getting really low. And I'll talk about that in a minute. I'll have sand dollars. These cute whales. And this is the same fabric I ha I use with mine, which I love that fabric. So these will be called my sock wristlets. They will, they're very, very simple. They have no closures, no zippers or anything. They're super simple, but they're super practical, and that's why I like them. Those will be in the shop on Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then I also have uh, my regular size project bags. These are, I would say these are up to a three skein project bag. They, and that, that would be pushing it. I would say these are best for a one to two skein project. But um, I do have some um, limited edition bags that I am in love with. These are bags that I actually sewed from upcy upcycled fabric from Aloha shirts, which people on the mainland call them Hawaiian shirts, but they're Aloha shirts. These are so fun. I love these because if you guys are familiar with Aloha shirts, they are, they have the loudest fabric. Fabric you really can't find anywhere else, I might add. They are fun, they are loud, and um, that's why I love them because they have, they really are so fun. Here's another one I have. I love this one. So I will have, um, I'll have three of these. I was able to get three out of the shirt. I will have three of these. And then I also have, I think I have um, two regular sizes of these and then one that's a little shorter. And I will mark that in the shop. I love this. Love the fabric on that. Um, they will all, like with all of my project bags, I have the little pineapple on the zipper just for a cute little accent. So yeah, I will have these. And then I actually cleaned out my um, pineapple yarn storage today <laughs> or this week. It's um, the storage, AKA a closet. And I found a ton of cut out project bags in fabric I purchased in Hawaii when we lived there. And I am, I was so excited to find this because I can't get the fabric here on the mainland that I purchased there. So I will probably have enough to make maybe two project bags for these fabrics. Um, that being said, when they're gone, they're gone. Um, I don't have any plans in the near future to fly over to Hawaii and uh, bring an empty suitcase with uh, to bring fabric back. Now, if I had the opportunity, you bet I'd do that because <laughs> there is, you can purchase the best fabric there. But um, let me just go ahead and show you some of those fabrics. So this is one of my favorite, favorite project bags. Um, I believe I call this Honolulu in tan. And this is such a cute, cute fabric. You can see right here, this is Waikiki. There are some different landmarks and street names. This is one of the cutest fabrics ever. It is super cute. I think I will, I might have enough left for two of these and this is one of them. So I'll have that. I will have another Hawaiian themed fabric, which is really, really cute. 
All of these project bags are lined um, and interfaced, so they have a good deal of body, and they are the ones that I use all the time. They all have contrasting zippers, and of course they all have the pineapple, the little enamel pineapple right there. And um, yeah, these are just really great all-purpose project bags. I have this. This is definitely all of my one of my all-time favorites. Volcano. Love this little girl here. I mean, this is just such a cute fabric. So that's some of them I will have. Um, have that one. This is so pretty with diamond head here. I I mean I could go on and on. I have so so many project bags I have been working on. Um, so those will be in the shop this Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then I'll also have just some. I can't get this fabric again. This isn't specifically fabric from Hawaii. It's just really pretty fabric I like. <laughs> okay, I'll stop there. Anyway, I do have a ton of yarn in the shop right now. Um, I guess my, my update two weeks ago was quite a large update of yarn. So there is still a ton of yarn in the shop. Um, so I decided to add some project bags uh, just to kind of balance out the yarn, I guess. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is that I have two new listings up in the shop that may be of interest to you. Um, the first I have is a sweater quantity listing. So if you're wanting to purchase a specific colorway of three or more skeins for a larger size project such as a sweater or a shawl, you can uh, purchase it there. All you have to do is um, put the number of qu uh, quantity of skeins that you want and then just leave me a note at checkout what colorway you would like them dyed. And I just thought this was a really great way to do a custom order um, if you wanted to do some kind of sweater or larger project. So that is my sweater quantity listing. And then I, I will actually have a link to that uh, in my show notes below. And the other thing that I'm very, very excited about and I'm excited to be offering to you this year is my 2018 advent calendar. And I love yarn advent calendars. I think they are such a fun idea. And um, I'm so excited to be offering to this to you guys this year. I will be doing a beach themed Christmas holiday advent calendar. Um, of course it would be beach themed because it's not going to be winter themed or snow themed. <laughs> I know I'd like to be at the beach this winter. I'm sure some of you would also like it. So I will be doing that in a beach theme. It will include 24 um, 20 gram mini, skein, mini skeins. Um, the colorways I will be dyeing will be exclusive to the advent calendar. I will not be uh, putting those in my shop. They will be exclusively for the advent calendar. I will never re-dye them. So that is one really cool thing about this. Um, it will also include a project bag, just like the ones I showed you. It will be a, um, probably a beach themed, holiday themed project bag. And I will be putting some other little goodies in there for you guys. You have the option at on the listing to add a full skein in your choice of base. I have my, um, my Lani sock base, which is kind of my standard sock. With nylon, I will be having uh, MCM N base, which is merino cashmere nylon, and then I'm pretty sure I have my gold nani twist base, which is a um, gold Selena sparkle base. So that is really really exciting. I have everything planned out so far. It will be packaged beautifully. Um, I really like to make things. Packaging is really kind of a big deal to me. And so 
when you open up this advent calendar, I want you to be so happy. I want it to be a present for yourself. Um, I want every day when you open up the yarn to be like a little gift to yourself. So check that out if you are interested. I have already had people purchase it. I will have the listing up until August, I think August 15th. So if you um, need some time to um, prepare to buy that, um, just know that it will be in my shop until August 15th. So you have some um, time to purchase that if you're interested. So I do think, I actually had planned on buying the, um, I think it's the Opal Advent Calendar, which is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous, and hard to get in the States. I feel like it is. I don't know if they're going to be offering it this year. I don't think Opal is going to have it. So if you are interested in Advent Calendar, there are a lot of makers out there who are doing one this year. And I'll, I know a lot of their deadlines have come and gone. They don't even have listings up anymore. So, um, so yeah, check out the advent calendar. It'll be up until August 15th. And um, let me know if you have any questions about it. Well, I think that's all I have to show you guys this week. Um, that was kind of a long episode for what I normally do. But I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, leave me a comment below if you have any questions or I'm always looking for spinning advice really any advice I'm really not an expert on anything so um, if you are interested in um, anything I talked about on the podcast I'll put links for everything below and um, if you like this podcast give it a thumbs up like it subscribe it so we can get it out there for other makers like us who enjoy connecting via YouTube so until next time which I hope will be next week hopefully we won't have the weeks that I've been having but until next week I hope you have an awesome time with your knitting bye guys